I think it is finally time for me to show you guys my nail desk organization and all of my favorite nail items that I have bought over the last few years. If you're new here and you've literally never seen my face before, hey, what's up? My name is Kaylee. I have made lots of videos of me doing my own nails and I actually started doing my nails when I was like 10, 11 years old. I'm 22 now, so I've been doing my nails for over 10 years. You know, a true DIYer. I just wanna learn how to do things myself. In the long run, doing a lot of these things yourself at home do save you a lot of money. The nails that I do would cost me like $100 where I live, if not more than that. I totally get it. Nail techs are trying to like get their bag, but but most of us don't have that bag to even give. That's why I started making nail videos and just why I started doing my nails. And also I was running into the issue where I would get my nails done and it was never what I wanted. They were always chunky. They would always cut my cuticles. I literally got fungus from getting my nails done and I was kind of just over it. So I was like, I am fully dedicating some time to figure out how to do my nails like an actual professional. You guys have seen me learn a lot along the way. I have made lots of mistakes in a lot of my nail videos. I'm actually quite confident in the way that I do my nails now. With a lot of constructive criticism in the comments, I have learned a lot. I actually have a few textbooks that people use in cosmetology school. It has all the information in there about what you learn in cosmetology school about nails, and I have a few other books just specifically on nails. Right now I am sitting at my nail desk. Let's just take a moment for the actual desk, okay? It's from Ikea. It's two mini Alex drawers and a desktop. And I needed something with a lot of storage because when you do your own nails, it's not like you just are gonna buy a few nail polishes. I do Gel X nails, I was into dip nails, I tried acrylic nails, I'm not the biggest fan. You accumulate a lot of nail polishes. There's bigger nail tools, like you need room for a drill, your nail lamp, and there's just so much stuff. You're gonna see these drawers are chock full of stuff. There is no room in them anymore because they are filled. I wanted to make sure I had something big enough going this way in front of me and that was the most important thing because I need room to put all of my things and I film my nails so I needed a clean white background. I do have a little bit more nail stuff because I film YouTube videos. You don't need all of the stuff that I have. I do actually use this desk for a lot of things. So 90% of the time this is what my nail desk looks like. Working, editing, but if I'm gonna do my nails this is what my nail desk looks like. Before we get into the drawers, I just want to point out this thing that I always have on my desk when doing my nails. It's a little hand rest, and if you have a problem with your hands being super shaky when painting your nails, this helps so much. It helps your hands to be more raised so they're closer to your eyes so you can see your nails better. And my nail curing lamp fits perfectly under it. This is also amazing if you have clients and they can set their hands on it. It makes the whole process feel a lot more professional. First starting out on the left side, and I'm just going to go from the top to bottom showing you guys everything that's in my drawers. First drawer is a lot. These are all of my nail polishes. 99.9% .9 of these are gel polishes, but I do have a few in here that aren't gel. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't even really use them because I am a gel girl. There's not really that much organization. It's kind of like organized clutter. I can look at this and know where everything is. I do keep all of my nude base colors for French tips and under designs and stuff over here. A lot of my favorite nail polishes are Beatles. This is the main nail polish brand on Amazon. I am not like, a bougie nail polish person, you can get a cheap nail polish to work if you know what you're doing. I think you need a high quality top coat and then you're good. I have quite a few brands, like I have CNB, OPI, some Kiara Sky products. I have mastered the base color on French tips and stuff. I have two that I layer. The first one is this brand Amelie from Amazon, shade 036, my skin color type of nude. And then I layer that with this one. I have no idea how to say that. And this is more of a milky, transparent pink. I did put these two containers in here to try and get a little bit of division going on. I have these Apre Extend Gel. And this is the same exact type of gel that is used to apply our gel extensions, but obviously these aren't clear, these are colored. So just makes it like easier when you're painting them because that part is already the color that you want, so you don't have to do as many layers on top. And I have actually used these as actual colors to paint on top as 
as well because these colors are really really pretty natural nude pinky colors and then in this little container here I have little acetone dishes the way I organize stuff is very practical I grab the stuff in here the most so I wanted it to be closest to me in here is my main nail tools I have my nail clippers that I cut my acrylics off when I'm going to remove my nail getting into cuticle nippers you can see I have multiple pair this pair is specifically for cutting the epinicium off and that is all that these are used for you do not want to use the ones you cut your cuticles for removing nail gems and stuff like that you want it to be very specific because you want these to be as sharp as possible I have two more pairs of cuticle nippers in here and this is to remove tiny gems before I'm gonna be removing my nails so if I have little pearls or rhinestones I'll use these these are for bigger gems and to cut my actual nails off too or to like trim them in a specific shape and then I of course just have normal nail clippers I mainly use these for my toes when I'm doing a pedicure and then I have all of my wooden cuticle pusher backers if you are not as experienced I would definitely say to start out with either wood cuticle pushers or rubber ones jumping into using the metal ones isn't really the best idea because you can actually damage your nails with those a lot I have these if I'm doing my friends nails or something and I didn't sterilize my tools very very dirty don't judge I haven't cleaned it in a while because I kind of stopped using it this is my old airbrush tool it is one from Amazon she put in the work but I wanted a higher quality one so I don't really use her that much anymore and then back here I just keep my flash cure light and this is my favorite flash cure light I have tested so many but this is my favorite because it just it stands up you don't have to keep it plugged in you charge it so you can just use it at any point in time I have my nail drill right here and this is the one by Melody Susie and Melody Susie actually has quite a few nail drills and I think this is the 70 ish dollar one I used to have the cheaper one this one has the rpm you have to charge it it doesn't like plug into the wall and then over here you can change the direction of which way it goes you know it's a very basic nail drill but it is like really good for the price I have thought about getting a more expensive one just to you know be a little bit more professional but I gotta say this one does the job and I've never had an issue with it with the super cheap ones I have noticed that you know this thing can somehow get bent and then when this turns on it wobbles but this one doesn't have that issue at all best nail drill I've ever used this is my new airbrush machine and I got the Apri one this is right here right now because I had nowhere else to put it <laughs> it didn't fit in the other drawer with all of my airbrush stuff so I just put it here because I had an empty spot I've used this airbrush like three or four times now and it's pretty good it is better than the one on Amazon over here is a bunch of really random stuff I have a bunch of cuticle pushers and these are my extra ones I keep the cuticle pusher that I always use in another area okay there's cuticle oil everywhere I don't know when cuticle oil leaked in here I never go in this container so oops ignore that if you're growing out your natural nails sometimes they start to get really curvy to get your nails to stop doing that you paint your nail with your nail polish or your hard gel you're bending your nail to the shape that you want and then you cure it and then it stays in that shape so that's what those are for because I was growing out my nails and my nails were having a really hard time with curving and those really really help this is my gem tool this side picks up little rhinestones and then this side literally can pick up anything it's like wax and it picks up things like very easily these can accidentally break off so I have just a few extra in here I have this tool and it's actually to rub on metallic powder on nail polishes and instead of just using the little disposable ones I wanted to get one that was a little bit more sustainable I have my little magnet for magnetic nail polish. I have my little pipette to like fill my DIY cuticle oil. This is the junk container in my nail drawers. I always need little cotton rounds and alcohol wipes. Very accessible. If I spill something, if I get anything on my skin. When doing your nails, you just need that all the time. So I made sure to make those super accessible right here. I have my sanding bam for my nail drill. I have my Burt's Bees hand cream and if you your hands are dry this is what you need to use it feels really really greasy but like put it on before you go to bed or something drawer number 
three. All of this is gems and charms and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna kind of take you through some of the stuff that I have in here. So I have a bunch of these little containers back in here. And I'm pretty sure I actually got these from Michael's or Joann's. They have a bunch of flowers and I actually get flowers for like resin projects. I obviously put them in nails and I create encapsulated flower nails. And these are some of my favorite nails that I have ever created. I have a bunch of different flowers in here. I have obviously accumulated a lot of gems and charms and stuff like that. When you do that, you're gonna need to get these little containers because it just makes life so much easier. It keeps them organized because if not, they're just gonna be everywhere and you're never gonna be able to find anything you need. I have a bunch of little sparkles. These are so pretty. I have three polishes right here that like this type of art. I have a silver one and a gold one from Amazon, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like the gold one. It's like not gold. It, I think it's more champagne. I haven't used this one yet, but I have very high hopes and you guys will see it used eventually. All of these little containers in here are metallic powders that you rub on nail polishes. Like this was the one that went super viral for the Hailey Bieber glazed donut nails, the OPI one. And I just have every single color imaginable in here, but the OPI one is my favorite. Moving on to right here, I have another whole entire kit of gems. Going into this container, I have some more little flowers, rhinestones, more rhinestones. These are all colors, more flowers, heart rhinestones. And then these are more for Valentine's Day. They're little hearts and flowers and butterflies. I have some higher quality like Swarovski gems that I keep separate from my other ones just so I know that these are higher quality and they just sparkle so much more. These are my super tiny rhinestones. I have little flowers and fruits. I've actually never used these. I can't wait to do like summer nail looks with these. Picturing something with like resin nails because I feel like that would be so cute. These are all of my nail tapes. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really use nail tape anymore. This is amazing for beginners if you want to map something out to create a straight line but I'm honestly pretty decent at making straight lines so I don't really use these anymore. These are my tweezers for all of my rhinestones and gems and then these are sprinkle on glitters and they're from Kiara Sky and I've used them a few times and they are insane. I have these little beads and I love using the little tiny ones just to add a little spice to nail looks. I also have gold ones but super fun story. Accidentally hit it off of the table when I was using them and they fell all over the floor and these were the ones that were salvageable. Definitely were not fun to spill all over the floor because they're so tiny and I have cats so it was horrific. Getting into this side, back here I keep all of my files. I always get the washable 100, 180 grit ones. These are just my favorite, I've used them forever. If you get a new file and you're ever like going like this and you accidentally cut yourself, there's a little hack to make that not happen. Every single time you get a new file, you get an old file and you file the edges so then you don't accidentally cut yourself. I learned that the hard way and I always used to accidentally cut myself and it was just not it. So right here I have my buffers. I don't know if you guys can tell but I made my color scheme pink. So I definitely need to get me some pink buffers and these are also 100 and 180 grit. So right here is actually one of my favorite nail purchases ever and it is my nail drill bit holder. I have quite a few. I actually don't really use that many of these. I'm a pretty plain girl and I'm not gonna lie, I use my ceramic nail bit for everything. But just wait, just wait. It lights up. It lights up. And tell me that's not like the most aesthetically pleasing thing ever. I love it so much. So I'm gonna remove this really quick to show you something that I recently bought that made my drawers look so much more organized. And that is a booklet for a bunch of my nail art. And I have a bunch of nail stickers that, you know, they just like pile up and they look really messy. It's like a little photo album. And this would be amazing too if you're like a professional and you have clients and you could give this to them to look at all of the nail art nail art plates and these are the little plates that I use to put my nail polish on and to dip dotting tools in or to put my nail art brushes in to do design. And I actually have three of them but one of them is dirty right now and I need to clean it. I like to get the super cute aesthetic ones. I feel like it romanticizes the process. It just it makes your nails more fun. And right here I have my 10 nail clips. These are used for removal so you put a cotton ball with acetone 
and you put it like this and you let them sit for 15 minutes. No matter what nails, you need a little brush. You can use an old makeup brush, but I wanted to be fancy and get like a cute aesthetic one to get the dust off your nails, especially if you do dip nails. I love it. And it comes in like a little case, so then you can put it away in your drawer and it just like looks super clean. Drawer number four. This is stuff that I don't really grab as much, but obviously I need to put it somewhere. I'm not gonna pull everything out back here. You guys know I used to do dip nails a long time ago, but now I'm like a gel X girly. A lot of my dip nail stuff is in storage. I do like to keep one dip nail product and one acrylic powder if I want it for a design so that I don't need to go to my storage unit and get it out. This is newer to my routine because I do want to go about things in a little bit more of a professional way. This is a sterilizing case. You put all of your nail tools in here that you want to sterilize, put rubbing alcohol, and you let it sit and you let it kill all the bacteria. Even if you're at home, you're not using your tools on other people, you still need to keep your nail stuff clean. You do not want to be unsanitary because that will lead to infection and it grows bacteria on it and it's just not good. You wanna keep your stuff clean. I cannot stress that enough. For the longest time, I didn't, and it's just, it's not good. I always keep fresh, clean towels designated for my nails. I lay this down on my desk so I don't get anything on my desk. Over here is kind of random. I have monomer right here for acrylic. I have slip solution for poly gel, cuticle eraser, foot cream, callus remover. I have these scrubbers for the bottom of my feet. Last thing I have right here is little buffers. These always come in handy and I had a bunch left over because for some reason on Amazon you have to buy like a hundred of these there's no kits of like 10. You have to buy them in bulk. I want my whole entire nail desk stuff to be pink, so these are going to eventually be all of them. Last drawer. So this one's pretty not cute. It is as organized as it can be. These are all gel extensions. I have every single shape you can think of. My all-time favorites are by a prey. They're the strongest, they're the thickest without looking bulky. I have them on right now, but I will say there are definitely good ones on Amazon as well. And this brand is the best that I have found on Amazon. They're the most similar to the Apre. They are a little thinner, but it's not going to be that big of a difference. And then back here is where I have a bunch of nail tips from doing dip nails or acrylic. And then there are certain things that I just have nowhere else to put them. Like these are foils for nail removal that I just kind of have to keep there because I can't fit them anywhere else. Something that I definitely think comes in handy for when you are newer to nails and you want to test stuff out. Usually you see these at a nail salon and they have all the colors on them with numbers and you pick your color out. And I've been meaning to do that and label all of my nail polishes with colors, but it's just a lot of work and I haven't done it yet. For example, I just did sweater nails for the first time and I didn't want to do it on my actual nail if I was going to do it wrong. I only had clear dip powder. I didn't have clear acrylic powder and you need that for this nail look so I was like oh, I don't know if dip powder will work so instead of doing it on my natural nail I did it on one of these off camera to see if it would work and thankfully it did but it's just helpful to like test something out like if I want to test my airbrush machine if it's working properly I'll use one of these so now going to the right side now the top drawer and the bottom drawer aren't actually nail stuff like there's hair clips and claw clips and scrunchies and stuff in this one and there's a bunch of paperwork and like actual desk stuff like pens and stuff in these so i'm not going to show you guys those going into this one so everything right here is airbrush these are the air products they're not gel polish these are specifically for airbrush machines they're a lot thinner, like it's very liquid. But you know what, I am gonna call a prey out. And every single one of them was leaked when I got it, <laughs> so thank you. I contacted them and I took pictures of it leaked all in the boxes and sent it and it said, please send me new ones. Those were all leaked as well and even worse, they were completely empty. Not really recommending them, I'm. they're just here. So I would say don't get those. This little kit is to clean my airbrush machine and this is the actual like airbrush that goes on top of this. This is the dilution fluid. So if this is too thick, you dilute it. And I just bought the little dripper bottle because why not? I was buying the whole collection anyways. And I just put this in here and drip it into that. 
if anything on my airbrush breaks or if the needle bends or something and it stops working, I have all of the backup stuff as well sitting right here, just in case. All of these little containers right here are full of poly gel. So I have Beatles poly gel right here. These are all flat, normal colors. I got a bunch of poly gel kits. I'm not the biggest fan of poly gel, but I will say I love using clear poly gel on my toes to make my toes like a little bit longer and more square shape. Other than that, I don't really use it, but I still wanna like get better at it. And then I have my little poly gel brush right here. And then this is just other airbrush stuff, like this goes in it, so if I travel with it, I have the exact box to put it in. Now, getting into the bigger stuff. First off, this big boy right here. This is a nail dust collector. This is the one from Kiara Sky. When you're drilling your nails, no matter if you're doing dip nails, acrylic nails, or filing off gel extension, the powder is not good to breathe in. It is so fine that it's flying everywhere in your room. No matter if you have good ventilation, it's really, really bad for you. I knew this. I've been doing my nails for 10 years and I just got one of these. People were screaming at me to get one because there's powder everywhere. It's really, really not good to breathe in. The thing is, is these are really, really expensive. And I wanted to get a good quality one because the good quality ones aren't as loud. That's like one of the main reasons why I didn't want it is because they're so loud, but. It's like a little noisy, but health is more important. I have never been so happy that I got it. The amount of freaking dust that is caught up in these is absolutely insane. And it's crazy that that was just all in the air. Oh, are you? You have to be joking. Also, the dust just gets messy and it's really annoying. If you can afford one of these, please get one. If you can't afford one of these, definitely try and save up for one. Along with that, another precaution that I should have taken a lot sooner and preached to you guys sooner was wearing face masks when doing your nails. I was always like, mm, whatever, it's fine. No, it's not. You don't wanna be breathing in all of those chemicals, especially if you're using like monomer, acrylic, you don't wanna be bringing the powders. Like it's all horrible for you. This stuff is chemicals at the end of the day. And if you're doing this at home, you need to be a million times more safe because you're not a professional. You didn't go to school, didn't learn about all of the safety and cleanliness that needs to go into doing nails. And wearing masks is way more important than I thought. And masks are super cheap on Amazon. If you can afford to buy nail polishes or a nail drill, you can 100% afford to buy a mask. Of course I had to get pink ones. This is another filter for this. I just haven't had to change it out yet, so I just keep it right there. Back here, I keep two bottles. This is actually empty right now, but I wanted to keep it to show you guys what I use. I use pure acetone. Nail polish remover without acetone is not going to work, especially if you're using gel polish. It's not going to work. A lot of people are absolutely terrified of pure acetone. You need to know how to use it correctly, obviously, and you have to be careful. Pure acetone is the only thing that freaking works, let's be honest. I remember I got a comment from someone, and they were like, you should your acetone you should use nail polish remover and nail polish remover is acetone and I commented back and they were like no it's not and I'm like okay I don't know what else to tell you, but yes, nail polish remover is acetone, if you don't know. I buy them in huge bottles because this stuff goes out way quicker than you think. Um, this is my cleansing alcohol. Now, I usually just buy like normal rubbing alcohol, but last time when I was picking this up, I was like, oh, they actually have cleansing alcohol, so I'll just buy it. But I'm gonna be honest, I cannot stand the smell of this. I I don't even know. It smells like fruity rubbing alcohol. I hate it. So next time I'll be buying normal rubbing alcohol because I can't stand it. What I use rubbing alcohol for and like cleansing alcohol is to clean my tools like I was saying before and also to remove the, oh my gosh, I can inhibition layer. I don't know why I can never remember this word, but it's the sticky layer that is left behind after you apply gel polish and cure it. Over here is my pack of alcohol wipes. And I keep them in the other drawer, but there's like 400 pads in this kit. So I have to keep them over here as well. I pop a few of these into my purse as well if I need to like clean my sunglasses or one thing with sweater nails is they get super dirty so I've kept a few in my purse for like if they get dirty and I'll clean them off. But yeah, these kind of come in handy for a lot of things. Last drawer. 
first thing we got right here is my big cure light and I finally got a cordless nail lamp this one charges and also it's just it's so cute it's sleek it you know it matches the vibe of my nail desk having one with a cord honestly just gets really annoying it is just super inconvenient when you do your nails at home it's gonna take a long time like if you're watching this and you take six to eight hours doing your nails please do not be embarrassed by it because I still take like six hours to do my nails. You have to realize too that you can't do your other hand while this hand is curing like when you're at a nail salon. You are more of a perfectionist on yourself. You want it to turn out perfect. So it's gonna take longer. So when you're building your nail collection up, really, really try to think of convenience and what's going to help you make your life easier and quicker. I literally stopped making nail videos and doing my nails because it was so frustrating how long it would take me. But now I like want to make more nail videos because it's fun again, because it's easier. So this little fun thing right here is a airbrush cleaning pot. Put your airbrush in there and obviously I would have like the actual airbrush on there and you turn it on and you pull the trigger back and you flush out the old color. It goes into here so then you're not like breathing it all in. And you know, it's just a healthier way of doing it because that airbrush stuff can, ooh, if you're not in a room with ventilation, that's gonna make you feel woozy. It's not great. And then these are just little filters that you switch out every once in a while. These are past flash cure lights that I have tried to use that I'm not really the biggest fan of. This has been my least favorite purchase I have ever made. And it could just be because I do my own nails at home. This might be way better for like a professional does someone else's nails. And this is the Apre Flash Cure Light. And it doesn't turn on because um, I lost the freaking charger right after buying it. And what the hell kind of charger is that? I, I don't even know, so I can't charge it. This is the stand for it and it like sticks to this thing, but like it falls off like super easily. So I can't like use it on myself because you can't like apply a gel extension and hold it and flash cure it, but you could if you're doing it on someone else. I do gravitate towards using the little clips and foils to remove my nails, but these aren't horrible. Like these did remove my nails pretty well. You put really warm water in the bottom of the bowl and you put acetone in these and you put your fingers in them and you let them soak. And they do work really well, but I like my other way better. This is a, another nail remover tool and this is a steam nail gel remover. You put acetone in it, put your nails in it and it turns on and it steams your nails. It is really dirty and I don't know why. I don't ever use this though because the main problem I have with it is it, I only bought one of them. And this takes like 15 to 30 minutes to work for me and doing one hand at a time is very time consuming. If you don't do gel extensions and you just do gel like on your nails, I feel like this would actually be amazing. And then right here, I have a bunch of foils and I used to just cut up foil and use like normal foil, but I did see on Amazon that they had foils with little cotton pads and you put acetone on it, you fold it, and you sit there. It's so much more convenient right the convenience factor makes it so much easier and i don't know what it is about these but these like help remove my nails way better these are my charging cords for some of my cure lights i kind of just throw them right there <laughs> in the corner of my office i have this big alex drawer that i keep all of my makeup in but on top i like to keep this stuff kind of on display this is what i call my nail grab and go Kit. If I have to trim a cuticle really quickly, if I have a hangnail, or if I break a nail, I need to file it, or if I need cuticle oil or anything like that, I have all of it right here. I'm gonna take you through everything that's in it because I feel like everybody needs this on their desk or in their bathroom. First, I have just a normal nail file, a nail buffer, two little alcohol pads. Like I said, I keep these things everywhere. This is the best cuticle remover I have ever ever used. There's nothing else to say about it. It's just, it is the best. My cuticle oil, I actually make these myself. I'm gonna put a list of oils that I mix together. There's literally no measurements whatsoever. I just mix all of these together and I buy these little containers off of Amazon and I put it in there. People ask for a tutorial and I'm like, guys, there is no tutorial. Like just mix all those together and put them in there. That's what I do. Crystal nail files for when I need to file my natural nails. A glass cuticle pusher 
finisher. I don't really see a lot of people talk about these. It's actually removing the cuticle off of your nail plate and it's roughening up your nail right there. So then when you apply your gel extensions or if you're applying gel polish, it's gonna help your nails not to lift. By roughening up that area, it's gonna help the adhesion process. This is my favorite cuticle pusher ever. I'm pretty sure it's just a random one off of Amazon. I'll find the exact one. It's just, it's just perfect. And then I have a little scrapey side on this side to scrape the cuticle off of the nail plate as well. And then I always just keep one wooden cuticle pusher backer in here as well. I reach for this at minimum once a week. I got this three tier little container off of Amazon a while back. Middle layer are the ones that I use the most. The thing that I've learned the hard way is you wanna try and get metal. If you're getting wooden nail tools and they have like paint on them, if you get acetone on them they're going to disintegrate they're going to get sticky and it's just like really annoying like you want to be able to rub these down with alcohol and acetone to get stuff off of them this set that i got these are wood but they have like a glaze over them if acetone gets on them it doesn't just like disintegrate it and make them super sticky do not get plastic nail tools i used to have a whole entire kit of these do not get ones that look like this i just keep ones like this like for mixing nail polishes and stuff together but this one will get ruined they just they get sticky and gross so honestly the ones on top are really random and i don't really use them so i'm not really gonna tell you about them i'm going to show you exactly why you shouldn't get plasticky type of tools it's literally disintegrating and that is from me just cleaning it off and barely any acetone got on it i still have these because they're still usable but an alternative to these fully metal dotting tools. These are so easy to clean. You can wipe them down with an alcohol wipe or you can put them in the sterilizing kit that I showed you guys earlier. I have this stacking nail polish shelf and I love this. I think these are so cute to put your nail polishes on display. I personally put all of my top coats, extend gels, builder gels, cuticle oils in bottles, primers, dehydrators, just stuff like that because it makes it so much easier to reach for and it keeps them separated from my other nail polishes and like as you saw my other nail polishes are not organized i don't think you need super expensive nail polish but i think you should invest in a higher quality top coat this is the one i have been using for i think three years now gelish and i don't think i'll ever switch up now the two favorite extend gels that i have are the one by beetles and the apre one i gotta say one is not better than the other obviously the beetles one is way cheaper than the apres one i always get asked because I have the sensitive one. I just got this one after the normal one to test it out. They show no difference to me. They are literally the same exact thing. I just want to tell people that because I get asked all the time, why do you use the sensitive one? I just wanted to test it out. It's almost gone, but yeah, they're literally not different at all. The Orly Builder Gel is my favorite builder gel, period. I have quite a few nail dehydrators and primers, and I'm going to be honest, they're literally all the same. I have more expensive expensive ones from a pre and I have ones from Amazon. I kind of like the ones from Amazon more. The Morovan ones, those are the best ones I've used. I have the Gelish dehydrator and I'm telling you all of them are the same. Also, if you don't want to buy a dehydrator, you can just use rubbing alcohol. Like you don't need to buy a dehydrator, but they usually come in sets. Back here I have these two bottles and I actually should label them. I usually just like sniff it to see which one it is. Acetone and rubbing alcohol. What you do is squeeze it and it comes out. There's all of my nail organization, all of my products, absolutely everything is going to be linked down below. So if you guys wanna get nail products, these are my recommendations. I am gonna be fully transparent, about 99% of the links down below are Amazon affiliate links. And I do get a small commission from those. It doesn't affect you like as a customer at all. It just helps me make a little bit of money, put more money into my YouTube channel. And I of course always appreciate it if you guys use my affiliate links, but you don't have to do that. You can like just like look at what I have and then type it in Amazon and go and buy it yourself, you know? But I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I don't know if you like the way I put my words together, but I need you to stick with me just like some birds of feathers. But my bruises, scales, hand to hand.